Hello families, my name is Maggie Schoen, Curriculum Coordinator and Instructional Coach at Ecole Bilang de Berkeley. I am making this video for you today to give you some important information about using Seesaw, which is our distance learning platform for grades kindergarten through fourth grade. Why are we using Seesaw? It's a wonderful interactive tool for um, students and teachers to be able to exchange information. Students can complete work, they can share their work with their teacher in a variety of modalities and the teacher can respond with critical feedback to help them learn. We're using this as our main platform for the exchange of, um, of work that's being completed at home. And we're supplementing that with um, live Zoom sessions where students and um, teachers can be together um, in a live situation. When you use Seesaw, always use the class app. There is also a family app. You do not wanna download that app or sign into that app. The family app is a way for families to see an online portfolio of students' work. But the way that we're using Seesaw is the way that students would typically use Seesaw in a classroom because we want the students to be able to complete their activities and do their work at home in this case. So always use the class app. The first thing I'm gonna show you is how to log in. So you received a paper like this on the last day of school and um, you may have also been emailed this paper. It gives you instructions. And the wonderful thing about Seesaw is that it is a um, web-based program and an application. So you can use it on any device, either through the internet browser or on the app. So they would click on, I'm a student, and then they could scan their code or you can put in the text code, it'll take them to their page. Next, I'm going to talk about the main um, categories or features on Seesaw. There is the journal. The journal is where all the students' work will be posted that they have completed and also general messages from teachers or specialist teachers. Um, will go on their blog. Then there's a section called activities. These are the things that are being assigned by the teachers where they would like the children to complete the activity and provide a response. And then there's the inbox um, where you'll see messages and announcements from teachers. Um, the teachers are in the habit of every day, the French and English teacher posting an announcement to the inbox with the list of things that they would like the children to do that day. So here's a list in English from Emily, here's a list in French from Jean-Philippe. Um, and you'll see that the teachers can also add audio of their Merci messages. And that's a wonderful way for even our youngest students um, to be able to access the plan for the day. And it's here in text um, for the parents. Um, I'm going to give you now some important tips to keep in mind about Seesaw. One of them is you must update the app often, update the app often, or um, set it to automatically update. Um, Seesaw is updating their app um, quite frequently, and if you don't have the most updated version, sometimes there's little glitches or bugs that will come up. Um, you can also refresh the app, sign out, sign in. If you ever try to post something to an activity and it goes to the journal instead, um, refresh the app, sign out, sign in, update the app, and then hopefully it should be working normally. Speaking of posting to activities, um, if you're in any part of Seesaw, you can be in journal, activities, or inbox, and if you click on this add button and you decide that you want to post a photo, a drawing, a video, upload something, a note, or a link, it will go directly to the journal. The problem with that is then it, that work is not associated to an activity that the teacher has signed. So that makes it a little bit difficult for the teachers to be able to appropriately comment and approve on that work. So if your child does need to send a message to their teacher or they do something outside of the assigned activities that they really want to share, they can use this add button and they can post something to their own blog. But please use it sparingly because the teachers have a lot of work 
work to comment and approve on. Otherwise, for the most part, what you'll be doing is instructing your child to click on activities, and then when they go to an activity um, that they wanna work on, they're going to click on this green button that says add response. It's much easier this way because then when the teacher clicks on that activity, they can see all the responses they've had from students and they can um, appropriately uh, comment and approve your child's post. Another thing that I want to mention is that when you add a response and you take a photo, you can upload as many as 10 photos to the same activity. So um, you don't need to uh, click on the, um, the journal and click on this add button and post one page of your writing and then page two. You can go straight to the activity, you add response, and you can upload up to 10 pictures on the same post if you have an activity that you completed that requires more than one photo to share it with your teacher. The next thing I'm going to talk about is how to complete an activity when the activity includes a template. So for instance, this activity was assigned yesterday in English, and it's the spring poem. I can read the uh, instructions right from here. I can play the instructions verbally from the teacher. Today is the first day of spring. Read the poem. And I can also double click on this if I want to see that um, work a little bit closer. But then when I click on add response, so I'm now ready to complete this activity if I'm the student, I'm gonna click on this blue, uh, green add response and here I have my template in front of me. So when an activity has a template, when you click add response, you won't have any choices, it'll go right to the template. Um, if we want to view the instructions again, we can go right here to view instructions. It says to, to circle the different rhyming words. So I have my pen here, waiting through the winter for the snow to melt away. Then finally it happened, spring came to save the day. So now I have two rhyming words, away and day. And then if we looked at the instructions, it says choose a different color for the other rhyming words. And we could go through and do um, blue and few. Um, so we're going to be following all the instructions on here and then they invite the children to underline nouns um, and to find adjectives in the poem. Um, if you click on this box up here, it'll take away all your tools. And if you want the tools back, you click on this pencil, the tools will come back. If you'd like to zoom in, you can click on this zoom in button. Um, and we can get closer to our work and then we use this little screen in the upper left hand corner and we can go up and down on our screen to zoom in on different parts of the poem. Okay, you don't want to, um, there's my eraser, I'm going to erase this stray mark that I made. If you're in the select tool, you can't move this and you could move it um, by clicking on these three dots and unlocking it, but you don't want to do that because then this, these marks that we made will start moving. So it's better to just keep this locked. Um, say you wanted to add text to a activity. Um, you can um, do that by creating a text box and you can write um, what you want in the text box. If you want to make that um, smaller, you can take these sides and push those in. You can also take the corner and you can make it smaller. Or if you want to make it bigger, you take the corner and make it bigger. You can do that from any corner. If you want to rotate something, say you took a photo um, and you want to rotate it so that it's the right way, you can rotate it. Say I wanted to add a photo to this template, I can click on my, um, photo tool here and I can upload a photo that I have on my device that I'm using or I can take a photo. And there I have my photo and again I can make it smaller or bigger. Um, and say I want to record myself reading the poem, I can go over to this microphone and I can record. Welcome spring, wading through the winter for the snow to melt away. Then finally it happened, spring came to save the day. 
and then I click over here on done. I can listen to the recording I made, I can re-record it, and then when I'm all done with my work, I click this green check, and it's going to upload the work, and now it says waiting for teacher approval. If I want to change the work, I realized I did something wrong, I can edit it. So I can edit item, it'll take me right back where I was, I can change anything that I would like. Or if I really did something wrong and I want to start all over, I can click on these three dots and delete the item. Um, now I'm going to talk to you about how to complete an activity if there is no template and you have the choice of tools. So I'm going to go into um, my teacher account and I'm going to click on um, this class and if I wanted to do this reader's workshop activity, um, I have all the directions here. It says I'm gonna go to Get Epic, um, which is uh, one of our enrichment website resources that I'm gonna do a webinar on shortly. Um, not this recording, but in the future. I'm going to read some books in the women's history collection that's been created on Epic. And then I'm going to do a reading response in my reading journal. And I can either take a picture of my reading journal and read part of it aloud, or I can use the video to record a response to my reading. So this activity doesn't have a template. So when I click on add response, I'm going to get a choice of options okay so depending on what the teacher has instructed you to do they might say please take a photo of your reading journal then you would click on your photo you would take your photo of your um, reading journal let's just pretend that's our reading journal okay and if they said record your voice over it then we can click on the microphone and we can record um, what our reflections were on the woman that we read about in the women's history collection. Um, but sometimes the teachers leave it open what kind of response they have. So you can click add response and you can decide, do you wanna take a photo of your work or a photo of your cahier? Do you wanna use the drawing tool and add some text or add a photo or add an audio here? We looked at all of that previously. You can click on a video and you can take a video of yourself talking to your teacher or telling them what you learned about the woman that you read about. You can also here upload a photo, a video, or a file that you may have on your computer. You can also you can select it from your device, but you can also select it from Google Drive. So if your child has created something on Google Drive, they could select it here and upload it. Um, you cannot upload something from Microsoft Word. So you can go on the Seesaw Help Center and it'll say the accepted files that you can upload. You could click on this note feature and you could type your um, reader's response for um, Jane Goodall and go ahead and put the things that you learned about Jane Goodall here, um, if that's the way that you want to respond. And the last one is a link. You could click a link here. The teachers use this a lot to provide links to students, but if there's a link that the student wants to share as part of their assignment, um, they could paste it here. This is another way if um, they have create something on Google Docs, they could also just um, paste the link to their Google Doc in this um, part here. So you can see when activities don't have a template, there's lots of different options on how students can respond, but always view the instructions to make sure that what the teacher is asking for, the students can do um, that, um, or if they leave it open, then they have their choice of tools to share their work. Next, I'm going to talk about how to print a page from Seesaw. I've heard from many families that said, um, I want to be able to print out the page because it's too hard for my child to um, do it on the template, um, right on the device. So I'm going to show you an example of how you might do that. Um, scroll down here to math. 
Um, so here's a math lesson. Um, there's two online resources to help the children with this. There's um, a video from Embark Online and a Zern um, lesson that they can look at, but then they have um, a choice to um, add response and here is their template for um, their math paper. Now remember, we can zoom in on this if we need to, and we could use our pencil and we could start um, filling in the template and answering the question right with our drawing tools. But if that doesn't work for your child and it would be easier for them to use a paper and pencil, this is the other thing I can do. I can double click on this seesaw post and down at the bottom it says view original. I click on view original and now what I can do is I can download this to my computer and I can print it out. So that might be an option for students that work better in that manner. The last thing I'm going to mention is how to get more support with Seesaw. Seesaw website has its own help center where you can type in um, questions and get answers. Um, Seesaw also has a YouTube page where you can type in um, certain things and, and um, find out how to do things. And I will be providing um, support for Seesaw as well. So you can always um, send me a message, um, mschoon at eb.org, and I will try to help you. Next week, we're going to provide a live Q&A session where I can do a Zoom with parents, and I can answer any of the questions you have about Seesaw. And we'll have some upcoming webinars as well, including a webinar on, on our enrichment resources, such as um, Zern, Raz Kids, and Epic. Um, we are here to support you. We thank you for all the efforts that you're doing to um, access this new online um, distance learning platform. And we hope the interactivity that you see between teachers and students on Seesaw will help facilitate um, the, the distance learning um, uh, um, that we are doing at this time. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.